everybody welcome back to my channel if you're here for the first time welcome please don't forget to subscribe before you leave if you like my content so today I'm actually going to be talking about tips to help you deal if you have somebody that you love who's incarcerated whether it be a spouse a loved one a sibling anybody more focusing on my other half my boyfriend aka my husband if you didn't see my prison wife video i will link it somewhere up here in the description box so this is kind of a part two to that and i'm actually just gonna go over some things to help you cope with being with somebody who's incarcerated i've gained a lot of friends with that last video i just figured i'd want to speak more about it because there's a lot that goes into coping with somebody who's incarcerated so let's just begin all right, so the first tip that I have is don't compare yourself to others. I know it's really hard and I know we live in a world where technology is right at our hands and we can see what everybody's doing, when they're doing it, but don't let that discourage you when you see other women who are with their husbands and they're buying homes and they're having other kids, you know, more kids or whatever it is that you don't have at the moment. Please don't let it discourage you. Um, I struggled with this actually a lot up until recently and then I just realized that that's not my life right now and it may be one day but right now it isn't and comparing yourself to others whether it be your friends or even complete strangers it's not going to get you anywhere. It's just going to make you upset and depressed and you really don't need to. You don't need to do that. Um, you just have to accept that this is your life. You know, you are choosing to remain remain with them and love them. Better days will come. Better days will come and you just have to remember that. All right, next one is stay positive. And I know that's such a generalized saying, stay positive. But I'm talking about, you know, stay positive with yourself and with your loved one. If your man is locked up, he's going to have a lot more harder days than you will, even though it is hard being out here on your own, especially if you have kids and you're having to take care of everything. But in the end, you are free to do what you want, usually when you want to do it. For them, you know, they're being told what to do every second of the day. You know, they don't have any freedom basically at all. There's probably a lot of bad situations that they're put around when they're in there. And you just got to remember that uh, they're kind of on the losing side of this. So what I mean by staying positive, bringing that back in, is when you're talking to them on the phone, just, you know, make sure you reassure them everything will be okay. Things are going to look up, you know, stuff like that. Stay positive. Give them info on their case or whatever it may be that you can do to help them stay positive and just remind them that you're there, you love them no matter what. Going in with staying positive, I would say to join some support groups because for you in your small little world, you may not even have anybody who knows anyone who's incarcerated or has somebody who's incarcerated and you might feel alone. But the sad fact is that America has the most amount of incarcerated people in the world. So guaranteed there's tons of people out there who are in the same situation as you. Um, whether Even though it's not in your immediate circle, there are other women, men, whoever it may be, that can relate to your situation. Um, when I did my last video, I actually had somebody reach out to me. Um, who has an Instagram account it's called love a prison wife and I will put the information down below um, if you want to go follow that page if you're interested if you're on Instagram um, she does post like inspirational quotes she actually helps um, the person who runs the page she actually helps women who have people loved ones that are incarcerated all over and they don't know how to get a hold of like their inmates or you know write or don't know how to do visiting because wherever someone is locked up it's always different rules for visiting writing all of that and I can see that she'll post stuff sometimes and help people figure out how to how visiting works for that facility or whatever so that's a really great thing to have is support groups online because to be honest I was always like I would probably never be friends with people online but you never know how much you can connect with somebody across the world, across the country, until you reach out and share your story. So I would suggest that. Definitely join support groups. I've actually gained a few friends from my last Prison Wife video on here 
who write me regularly, um, you know, ask me how things are doing. We exchange stories. I ask how their loved one's doing. And it's great. It makes you feel like you're not alone because you're definitely not. Like, you're, you're not. So, there you go. Okay, my next one is be open and honest with your loved one, with your husband, your man. I'm just going to say man from now on, my man, because that's who I'm referring to. Insert whoever you are referring to in your mind when I say that. So basically, just be as op open and honest with him as you can. I think for them, that means a lot just because they don't know what you're doing every single second of the day. Like I said, every facility has different rules on visiting. There could be places where they're locked up. You can't even have them call you on the phone. You can only have letters or like visits once a month. It's all different. So for me, he gets to call me every other day. So all the times that we don't talk, it's important that I keep him updated with the kids, our kids, our bills. If you share finances together, you know, make sure you just let him know what's going on just because you probably would feel the same way if it was you and you just want to know what's going on you don't want to feel removed from your own life and that's how they feel they feel removed from their own life um so just try to like keep them involved and then you know it also helps you feel like you're still close to them when you can still talk to them about those day-to-day -day things that you you guys used to do together you know those decisions that you used to do together keep making those decisions together the way you always did even if they're not physically here. This is a big one for me that I just recently learned how to utilize, and it's don't be afraid to ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. Um, for me, I struggled with this a lot. I was like, no one needs to help me. Like, this is nobody's problem. This is my problem. Like, no. Um, but in the end, you, everyone needs help sometime. It's true in some way or another. So if you are a single mother, if you're a single mother with children, utilize any programs that your state has. Like for me, I'll just give an example. I'm a working single mother, but I don't make, I, you know, I'm not at the level where I can get like, I can receive any type of food stamps or medical insurance. I have to cover that for my children, which is fine. But I was able to utilize our state's heat program, which actually helps pay for our gas and our electric in the winter. Um, so yeah, if you're living on your own and you're paying your own rent and stuff, try to find try to find programs that can help you with those small things. With them helping with the utilities, that will, will be helpful for me to put food in my kid's mouth. Just little things like that. If you don't know where to go, Google it. Like Google will be your best friend. Put in state assistant programs or whatever it may be. If it's help with your kids, don't be afraid if there's people in your life family or friends that offer to help take your kids when you just need a break because you're doing it all on your own, utilize that. I know it makes you, might make you feel like you're less than, but you're not. You're not less than by asking for help. Also remember that not everyone can relate to your situation. If you do decide to open up to anyone about your situation, don't expect them to feel bad for you. Don't expect them to relate to you in any way. And don't get upset if they don't. There's people who are going to say, basically criticize you for your situation, which is unfortunate. But, you know, people, there's a stigma about being incarcerated that whatever that person did, they deserve to be there. And that's not always the case. It is some, it is most of the time, but that's not always the case. So you just got to let it roll off your back and be okay with people not relating to you or just saying, just, you know, basically telling you, give up, move on, you know, he's gone, move on with your life. You gotta just not let it, you can't be like, hmm, should I? Think to yourself also, have they been in that situation where their loved one is locked up? Probably not. Just don't get upset if people don't relate. Let it roll off your back. Out the door. No one gives a... My second to last one. You don't ever have to explain your situation to anybody. There are people that I know that I talk to every day at work who don't even know that my man is locked up or anything like that. Um, and I've worked with them for a couple years now. To me, it's not like, oh, I'm hiding it. It's just that I don't feel like I have to explain. 
I don't like opening up to people because they're just going to know my business for the rest of their life now and they'll be able to pass judgment and probably get in that category of people telling me to leave and all that. I just don't feel like you have to explain your situation to every single person you meet. It's your situation. It's yours alone. You're going through it and you have support groups and you have your friends and family to help you get through it. You shouldn't have to explain to If you decide to tell everyone that you meet your situation, that's fine too. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying don't feel like you have to explain your situation to anyone. Don't feel like you have to stand up for yourself and say, well, this is why this and this, because you don't. You don't. No one has to do that. The last part is mostly about kids. If you have children with your man who's locked up, if you have children together, or if you, even if you had children from a previous relationship and, you know, you, they helped raise them, whatever it may be, you have children together as a family. Don't be afraid to show your emotions with them. Because for me, in the beginning, I kind of hid that a lot w with my kids. I would cry a lot alone. When my kids would bring up their dad, I would kind of just brush it off. I don't, I don't recommend doing that. When the kids start talking about their dad, talk to them about it. Whether even if it's if they're they're sad about it, talk about it. Just let reassure them as well. You, you have to be in this moment. I've learned you have to be a queen. You have to put on your your queen face and be strong. You have to be strong. Let your kids express their feelings. If they're sad, you know, reassure them that it will be okay. And for me, that's the hardest part because my when my son talks about his dad constantly, it, it breaks my heart inside and I really just want to cry. Most of the time I get, I'm fighting back tears usually when he talks about his father, but I pull it together, reassure my son because I don't want him to be scared about it or sad about the situation. So it's okay to show your emotions with them, talk to their, talk to them about it. And because this is something that, you know, depending on how long that they're incarcerated, this is something that could affect the rest of their lives, they'll remember. So just help them through it just as best as you can, as best as you can. That's all you can do though. You can only do the best that you can. I think that's all the things I wanted to talk about today. If you're watching this and you have some tips, you have stuff that you thought about while watching this that I didn't go through that you want to comment, go ahead and leave it down below and, you know, start a conversation, make friends, like we got to join together and be a community. We need each other. Anyways, I really hope that these tips kind of help. Really quick before I end the video, I wanted to shout out to my girl Daisy Nadal. Um, she started following me. And she's such a sweetheart. She's always commenting on all my videos. Just a sweet girl. I know she's in a similar situation. And thank you so much for your support, girl. I really appreciate it. Other than that, I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for all the love. And bye.